Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics, Musimathics Dynamical Systems video. In this video, I'll be going over the basics of dynamics, as well as talking about some interesting applications of nonlinear dynamics and chaos to music theory. A dynamical system is, essentially, anything that changes over time. We can model dynamical systems using functions that describe the motion of points in the system through time. These functions model and predict phenomena from the natural world, and can be accordingly simple or complex. Many dynamical models contain nonlinearities, making it very difficult and, in fact, often altogether impossible to obtain exact numeric solutions. However, recent developments in computing technology have greatly increased our ability to obtain more accurate approximations in most cases. In spite of these advanced computing techniques, there remains a large class of nonlinear dynamical systems containing nonlinearities strong enough to create chaotic behavior in the system, making any attempts at accurate analysis exponentially more difficult. I'll talk about chaos in more depth later in the video. Let's take a look at one of the interesting applications of dynamical systems to music, modeling key changes using basins of attraction. Modulation is a transition from one key area to another. In other words, it's a change from one key signature to another, occurring either suddenly or over the span of several bars or phrases. Alberto Pinto, a mathematical music theorist, proposed the idea of modeling key areas with basins of attraction, whereby modulations are represented as trajectories moving between basins of attraction. Wait a minute, you might be thinking. What's a basin of attraction? Well, a basin of attraction is a set of initial conditions for the system for which tra trajectories approach a stable fixed point rather than spiraling off erratically as time goes on. You can think of it like an actual basin, where all the liquid poured inside flows to the bottom and stays there, rather than falling off the ceiling or something. So essentially, when we model key signatures in a piece of music with basins of attraction, we're establishing degrees of tendency for all the chords in a given key signature. What this means is that music theorists know which chords are most likely to sound right before modulation, and these chords are placed toward the edge of this basin. Chords that are firmly stuck in the original key are placed at the bottom of the basin. So when the music accumulates enough harmonic energy to modulate, the energy forces us up and out of the basin into a neighboring one. There is a more technical description of this process, but I won't go into detail on that here because it gets a bit technical. Now, let's talk about chaos. Chaos is defined as sensitive dependence on initial conditions in the system. Essentially, very minute differences in the initial input can create totally different results later on. Chaos theory is a study of nonlinear dynamical systems exhibiting transient or global chaotic behavior. Despite apparent randomness, chaos is actually relatively deterministic. We can generally predict a general region the trajectory will be in, but not the exact position. Chaotic systems are used to model a large variety of natural phenomena, including turbulence and fluid flow, weather patterns, celestial mechanics, and population and ecology dynamics. Many aspects of our daily lives depend heavily on the chaotic behavior of natural systems. Chaos can have many potential applications to music composition. You can essentially assign any kind of relation, inverse, multiplicative, or whatever you want, between iterative chaotic mapping and any type of musical variable, and use this relationship to create mathematical music. A simple equation used to generate chaotic behavior is the following. f of x is equal to p x times quantity 1 minus x, where x takes on values between 0 and 1. For p-values greater than or equal to 3, bifurcations occur in the system. We 
You may be familiar with something looking like this, which is a plot as p varies from 1 to 4 on the x-axis. You can see it branching off into subsimilar branches, forming a fractal structure. We'll talk about fractals in the next video. In terms of the musical application of a function like this, you could assign the variables to determine bandwidth or frequency through a filter, or you could use the envelope of the function to derive pitch or amplitude. The overall structure of a composition can also be determined using this function as a guide. Some research that I've been working on personally is exploration of using dynamical systems to model pitch class movements on the phase plane. I'm essentially attempting to quantify what we experience as listeners when we hear maximally even chords lose their evenness or become less symmetrical on the one-dimensional pitch class circle. An example of a maximally even chord would be the diminished seventh chord. Moving any pitch by one semitone will give you a dominant seventh chord, which has a drastically different sound. My goal is to model these sonic changes caused by what I call pitch class perturbations. I have been experimenting with using the Van der Paul oscillator, a nonlinear dynamical system used to traditionally to model relaxation oscillations in vacuum tubing. I take the discrete Fourier transform, which we talked about in the previous video, of an input collection of notes and derive the Van der Paul oscillator with the resultant sign terms. It's interesting to see what kind of results you can get by tinkering around with the parameters of, of dynamical systems. That's all for this video. To see the next video in the Musimathic series or visit centerofmath.org, click right here on the blackboard. Thank you for watching.